All right, welcome back, True Seeker. It is the last day of February, February 28, 2023. And we've had some recent live streams. And all of those live streams, the call ins have kind of transitioned to talking about relationships and difficulty in relationships and, you know, men's problem with women and women's problem with men. So in this stream, I want to give a little advice based on my own life experience and try and help out some other people in the community. Shout out to Bamboo Soldier. Um, I, I recently heard him doing a, a broadcast on the Truth Vibration podcast. Shout out to him as well. And, uh, you know, they were just talking about relationship difficulties and the problem with this day and age. So anyhow, let's get into it. But I also want to remind that next month, March, starts tomorrow, Mondays and Fridays, I'm starting a new group. We've always covered sports, but we're starting a new group where we also talk about being smart with our money, investing, trying to be like a an encouragement group that shares knowledge and helps each other make better decisions to get ahead in the world and not behind because the game is rigged from the beginning to have us become debt slaves and slaves to a system and one of the things we're trying to do in this community is minimize that common problem to the greatest extent possible. And, um, you know, it factors in with relationships because the majority of relationship problems in this society come back to financial well-being. And, you know, some people don't know simple things like this. I just want to put this out there right now. If you have financial problems and you're single, it's going to make it a million times harder to find the right life partner, you know? The only person that's really going to be attracted to you is somebody that also has financial problems. And when two people come together that have financial problems, it creates a bigger financial problem and all the more likelihood that relationship will never work. So anyway, if you're someone right now, for example, that has a huge credit card balance and you're paying all this interest and you're getting further and further behind, which is the story, sadly, for the majority of Americans. Um, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but you can take your credit card balance and you can get a transfer balance credit card. And depending on what your credit score is, that transfer balance can last for up to 12 months to 21 months, which is nearly two years. Uh, say you have a credit card and you're way in debt and you're paying 20% interest each month, you're getting in a deeper and deeper hole. 20% interest at compound builds up to be a massive ton of extra debt. And that's why so many people are caught up in the rat race and can never get ahead because they have this exact problem. But if you take that credit card balance and you transfer it to the 0% APR card where you don't have any interest payments for between 12 months and 21 months it gives you a chance to start chipping away at that massive problem and, and the thing that so many people do is when they do do this then they don't even pay anything for 12 to 21 months and then they're in the exact same problem they were in you know before they made the transfer so if you do do this you should also start paying down the balance as much as possible every month because if you have debt in your life that debt just balloons and balloons and balloons. And when you have debt, it ruins everything. It ruins your credit score. It ruins your chance to save up money, go on a vacation, you know, get a house, start a business. It ruins all of that. And again, when it comes to relationships, if you're a man, a, a woman is going to be a lot more attracted to you if you are financially stable. You know, if you have... Uh, an income, you got your own business, a good career, you, you have a, a nice place, you have your own place, that's going to be a lot more attractive to a woman. You're trying to attract, you know, the woman of your dreams, that's going to help you out. And, and don't think of that, that's a woman being a gold digger, that she needs a man who's financially set. That is your natural place in the world as a man to be the provider. I, I know there might be all these new age ideas that are floating out there, but at the core of it, Men are the providers for the family. Men are the hunter-gatherers. Women are the caretakers, you know. That's what it is at the core. So as a man, you want to attract the right woman. 
you got yourself established financially, you're going to be a million times more attractive. And I mean, we also know that, you know, the, <laughs> you've seen it before, the, the rich old guy with the young model wife. You, you know, that's a relationship that's, that, that is the gold digger. And it, that happens too. That's not really a healthy relationship either. That's the kind of relationship where, you know, the, the young gold digger, don't be surprised if she has another boyfriend that she's out with when uh, the old guy's asleep. But um, again, in a relationship, you should look for somebody who's on a similar plane as you. You have similar qualities in life. You know, you, you got things in common. It's important to have things in common. It can't just be mutual attraction. Two people who are attracted to each other, it, it can be nice for a while. But then, you know, if, if it turns out that you're just two totally different people outside of your, your sexual chemistry, that relationship is certain to fail. And um, the thing is, I mean, for some people breaking up... It, you know, it's not the end of the world, but some people, every time that they break up with somebody, it's like they lose like a part of their soul or a piece of them and they become more jaded and then they carry that into the next relationship and then that already compromises the next relationship. So what I would say to all young people is don't rush into some big relationship. Uh, here, here, you know what? Uh, here, here's my only exception to that. When I was in um, middle school, actually, I had a I had a nice old sweet lady. She was one of our teachers. She taught the home ec class. I don't even think they do that anymore, but, you know, taught you how to take care of the house and cook and sew things. And she, But she taught home ec and she taught math. I had her for both classes. And um, her life advice was to find your sweetheart in high school, get married early, you know, make a life together, have goals together, dreams together, and achieve them together. She said, trust me, if you can do that, you'll, you'll have the happiest life. And, and that was her life experience, and she was speaking from her own life experience. That can be a challenging thing to do because, I mean, a lot of times when you're in high school, you definitely don't have your, your financial, uh, you know, pedigree yet. But, um, yeah, I, again, I, I'm not saying that I know it all. It's just, you know, I always think of her. That, that was her advice to all of us as students. And, and I didn't take that advice. I, I, I had the idea of I'm going to establish myself in this world and then I'll eventually meet the lady of my dreams. And um, it's not easy to meet the lady of your dreams. And, but I, I, I did follow the plan and I, I did meet a, a really, you know, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. And we've been together since uh, 2012. So, um, and, and I, I think we'll be together forever and ever. But it, 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 was, it was hard work to get into the position that I want to be in. You know, it, it's hard work to get ahead financially. It, you got to be disciplined. My path there was, you know, studying hard for once upon a time, getting a job that paid well, working hard, saving, being smart. You know, when Sweet Lady met me, I already had a home, right? You know, that was something that impressed her. Oh, wow, he's got a home. You know, he doesn't have debt. You know, he's got he's got his own business. So there were things that that sweet lady was attracted to. And, and of course, there was a mutual attraction. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't looking for her to provide for me. I was just looking for, you know, someone who's got a nice personality and fun and intelligent and engaging and, you know, on a similar intellectual level. And... You know, I, I had to be patient. I, I didn't find her just right away, but I was um, I was about 28 years old when I found her. So, and and there were other nice ladies I met along the way. And maybe had I, you know, I mean, there were other nice ladies I met along the way. But when I met her, just the timing was right. My life was more established than it ever had been, and um, she was just also different, more different, uh, more different. She was. She was definitely different than anybody else. I, I never met anybody so direct. And, and that was something. I, a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people, if they met Sweet Lady, they would really like her, but they wouldn't be able to deal with how direct she is. <laughs> you know, most of Americans are like passive aggressive and indirect. She's super direct. But I love that about her because I, I always know what she's thinking. And the only time she's not being real direct is when she's giving me the silent treatment, which I don't appreciate. It probably happens about twice a year. But whenever she gives me the silent treatment, I know what I did wrong. Like, for example, the last time it, the, the last time I got the silent treatment, I, I didn't sleep well that night. I was grumpy, right? And she brought me a glass of water with a lemon in it. And instead of saying thank you, which is what I should have said, 
I said back to her, and, and the reason I didn't say thank you is because I had just said like two days earlier or something about this. I said, the other day, two days earlier, I said, thank you, but, because in the morning, I like to drink warm water, right? I don't like to, and this is the winter time too. I, I don't like to drink cold water, but when she brought it to me, like I, I didn't get enough sleep and I said back to her, I said, remember, I don't want cold water in the morning. Oh, she was mad. She just walked to the bathroom, just dumped it in the sink and then didn't say anything to me until she left for work. And then when she got home, you know, she was over it. And then we had a nice dinner together and we moved on. But, uh, and yeah, I mean, you make mistakes in relationships. You got to be able to forgive each other and apologize and, and learn from the mistakes and not keep repeating them. You know, like I think if I treated her like that every morning, like if every morning I was just a grump and just said something rude every time she tried to do something nice, she'd probably leave me. And, and, and when people start treating their, their significant other poorly, I mean, that's when, you know, cheating happens. That's when the relationship dissolves. And, and, and so many people in this society, they do cheat to get out of the relationship. It's too hard for them to break up directly. So they do something scandalous to cause the, the explosion that terminates the relationship. Also, that's, not an, that, that's another thing that people shouldn't do. But that, that's what people do in America because we're so indirect. So, yeah. And, and then the other thing I just want to say is, like when I listen to people talk about relationships, and, and, and I can be guilty of this language too, it's like women are so down on men. Like it's a society of dogs and losers and, you know, cheaters and nobody's loyal and everyone's sneaky and snooping around and, you know, freeloaders. And I mean, th these things do exist, right? There are a lot of people that have these bad qualities. Um, but if you're ending up with people that have those bad qualities, like what mistake did you make to end up with them? Were, were there signs along the way that maybe this person, I mean, did you jump into the relationship too quick? What did you really know about this person? Did you meet him at the club? Uh, again, a lot of people do meet at the club or, or, or the bar and they, and they hook up after a few drinks. And then, I mean, I'm sure there, I'm sure there's a people that have met at the club before and, and they turned it into a lasting life, but I guarantee you there's probably 10 times as many stories where it ended up that the other person's a cheater and cheating behind. Cause I mean, most, I mean, that's what people do, right? They go out to the club to have fun and, and maybe hook up with somebody that night. So that's probably not the best way to meet somebody. If you're looking for a long-term relationship, the, the best way to meet somebody, if you're looking for a long-term relationship is like participating in an activity, some kind of, again, meetup.org, these type of websites, um, look for activities. You're interested in your community if you meet uh, someone you're attracted to at, at this type of thing, guess what? There's two people meeting at an event because they both have a similar interest. You already found somebody you have something in common with. And, you know, where's it go from there? But, yeah, th there's better places to meet people than other places. Um, if you're studying in school and you're studying a similar topic, going for a similar career, you've already met somebody who's on a, a, a similar life path. And, you know... Again, if you're on, a, that that really is, I think, the best thing you can do for a relationship. Find somebody that's on a similar life path to you, into the same things as you, closer to your age than not. Uh, it, it is normal for women to go for older men because usually women are more developed, um, well, in a lot of ways, including intellectually and, and verbally. And, you know, a 20-year-old a woman might be on a communication level that it takes a man who's closer to age 30 to be on. And that's why you do see so many older men with younger women, but sometimes it just gets too big of a discrepancy. That's when you find your gold digger situation. But a lot of these old guys, they don't care. They're like, I don't care that she's a gold digger. She's taking care of me in the bedroom. That's all I care about. I got everything else. And, and that's not a real relationship. You know, that's just a, let's say, uh, that's a sex based relationship which isn't a real relationship well I, who, who am i to judge but again a relationship should be more than just sex it should be you got things in common you know you got similar sense of humor you got similar things to talk about and if you do have a good relationship it gets better with time again but before before sweet lady the longest i'd ever been in a relationship with somebody for was about four years and it wasn't all at once there was a there was a break it was like two years and then a break for a while and they came back into my life and they made a plea to get back into my life and that was the mistake. I already knew it didn't. And then it, the same problems came up again and then I was like, yeah, I, should, I guess we shouldn't have gone back into this relationship. But live and learn. And um, 
Yeah, before that, about the, the longest relationship for that, before that, about two years. And in that relationship, that relationship that I stayed two years in, I, I should have got out of it within like two or three months because I knew it was wrong. And the reason I stayed in that relationship is because I felt bad. I felt bad for the person. And um, I, I'd met her parents early on and they told me that they'd just never seen her doing so well. And they were really glad she found me. And I always had that in the back of my head. And, and, and here was also a part of what was wrong too that I did. I think not only did I feel bad, but her parents, when I met them, they said, listen, you keep her on this path and you marry into this family. We'll take care of you. They were a very wealthy family. Again, I've mentioned this family before. They're connected to the ownership of the Detroit Pistons. And But yeah, it just the person just had too much stuff going on, too many red flags, too many crazy episodes. And yeah, I, I wish I could just go back and get those two years of my life back. And then I was nice when I uh, finally broke it off. And I still remember I got a huge claw mark across the face. My friends were like, what happened to your face? It's like, you don't want to know. But um, yeah, again, I mean, if you get signs early in a relationship that, that it's not right, I mean, get out of it. You meet the parents and they give you financial incentive to stay in it. If you're not happy, get out of it. Financial incentive is not... Not going to make up for being unhappy in a relationship. So, but yeah, again, I'm speaking mostly for men because I am a man. If you want to attract the right woman, you know, the financial thing can definitely help. But also if you're a younger person and that's not possible, again, you're in school, you're in a workplace. You like what you're actually doing for work. You're not just you're settled for the job because it's whatever job you can get at the time. But like you're in a, you're in a career, you're, you're in you know, you, you, you have your own business. You, you, you work out in the gym all the time. Another great place to meet people, the gym, you know, you're really into fitness. You're motivated to take care of yourself. You're going to want that in your partner. You know, gym, great place to meet your significant other. But also, I mean, you, you might, you probably want more in common than just physical fitness, but at least, you know, you have something, you know, you go out on a date, you find out like, what? That's your favorite author? Well, you love that movie. What, you want to do that too? You want to go on a vacation there? That's the first place I want to go. I, I mean, that's how you find out, right? You go on a date and you're like, whoa. And, and then also, I mean, you got to be real too. Some people go on a date and they're just like agreeable. They're like, oh yeah, that's my that's my favorite drink too. Oh yeah, that's what I love to eat too, but it's not real, right? They're just, and then you find that out after a while. You're like, wait, I thought you said you really liked, oh, you don't like this. You were just saying that to be agreeable. That, that's where you got to be real too. Some people are just so fake. And, and, and uh, again, I mean, I don't know what there's, what's with the whole agreeable thing. Like people just thinking that they have to, I, I guess it's just the herd mentality, right? I guess it's kind of like what goes on in society. I'm glad I don't have that problem. And women do like when a, when a per, and I, I think a guy likes when a woman's authentic. A, a woman likes when a man's authentic. So definitely be yourself, be confident, learn to make eye contact that, that, that can be something that might take maturity. I remember w when I was younger, for example, when I was younger, like the girls I was attracted to, I was too shy. They, I, like I was putting them on a pedestal and I just, you know, I was just, I don't know. You know, you can do that in your mind. Oh my God, she's just the most beautiful girl. I could never talk to that girl. So you might have to, um, if that's you, you can grow out of that. So you're not alone in that one. I think a lot of people have that same problem. But yeah, try to get over your shyness. And if you do think you're inferior, like ask yourself, why do I think I'm inferior? I wish I would have asked myself that when I had this problem. I didn't really think like that. I think it was just, I was like, again, put him on a pedestal. Oh my God, she is just too beautiful. I could never say hi to her. So. Anyhow. Yeah, you should have said hi. Yeah, I, just to make a point about that, I remember in high school. I in, in high school, I you know this girl that I that I had a crush on. I think she liked me too because I'd catch her looking at me a lot, but I was just too shy. And then I remember the guy she ended up dating. I was just like, oh my god, she's dating that guy. He's like chubby. <laughs> what? He's short and chubby. What in the world? And then I just realized one day I was like, you know what he had that I didn't? He had the courage to go ask her out. Oh my god, it was that simple. Everybody else was like, she is too beautiful. So, anyhow, anyhow, started the stream with a little financial tip. 
But, um, yeah, I also just, here, I want to throw something else out there. This, this, shout out to Bamboo Soldier and Truth Vibration Podcast. This, this, is what I, this is what I heard them talking about. I heard them talking about how it's so hard to date women right now because they're all jabbed up. They've all been jabbed up, and they don't want to date any women that got the jab. And I understand this sentiment, right? Because this does have to deal with finding people who are on the same wavelength path. But the reality is, like, what, uh... 80% of the population got jabbed. I would not make that your criteria for saying that I can't date a person. Because here's the reality, right? Not everybody drew the short stick. Not all of these people are going to get myocarditis and find themselves in the cemetery early. It's already happened to some people. It's not going to happen to everyone. And it could still happen to people who that symptom has not, you know, reached its uh, full deadly potential yet, if you will. But uh, again, the reality is it happened and maybe you like everything about this girl because I, when I heard Bamboo Soldier Tie, it seemed like there may be some girls out there that he likes, but they got the jam, so there's no way. You know what? Go be the the person that puts her on a better path. I mean, if you like her and there's other things going on that are good, you know, go, go keep her from getting the, the next round of, of jabs because you know they're going to do it again. I mean, Bill Gates has already put out the next pandemic. I mean, they've been simulating it. Spars. Save her from the next round, you know? So I, I, I wouldn't make that a criteria. Uh, otherwise, the, the even the group of eligible women to date is getting really small. And yeah, so I... I, I just overheard that conversation. I was like, hmm, it's interesting. I mean, I see where they're coming from, but yeah, I mean, you're going to make your pool of women almost, you know, non-existent. So sadly, you, you got to adapt to the times. And I, and I do think what I said is right. I think, you know, save her from the next round, you know, teach her about uh, autophagy in case there is something brewing inside. It's just like, you know, sweet lady. I I guarantee she would have got the jabs if she wasn't with me. I guarantee absolutely a million percent. And um, again, I told you her her good friend from that class, she was listening to everything I was saying and looking to my information, and she's all about it now too, you know. I kept her friend from getting the jabs as well. And neither of them are bad people, but they probably would have went along with everyone else. So, you know, that's what I mean, just like, I'm sure plenty of good people got the jab because they just went with the herd and didn't have enough information. If that's the only thing that you have that's keeping you from dating a woman, I would go be her Prince Charming and, like I just said, keep her from uh, falling victim to the next round. So with that said, let's do about an hour, hour 15 minutes of phone calls. And if you do call in, uh, try not to eat up the whole whole phone time. Try and uh, keep your call to... Five minutes max and try to do it less than that. Um, make a great point. Share your relationship success. Or if you got a question for me, uh, again, I, I'm not a therapist or a counselor, but I think I do have some um, some good life experience and possibly some good advice. And, um, I have counseled some young people with their, their dating and relationship woes back in my teaching days. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is just like how many people like get all wrapped up in relationships and heartbreak at such a young age, and then they're distracted from the things that they should really be focused on at that age. So, anyhow, if you want to call in, I'm going to put the number up here on the screen, and I will pin it as the top comment as well. Let me move that here, and let me make it bigger. All right, if you guys want to call in, the number is on the screen. And um, yeah, also, I guess the one other thing I didn't say while we wait for the next call is, again, it's just we've been we've been raised to be so competitive and so about ourselves and, and not learning how to cooperate. And, and people have ultimately become selfish. And 
there are men that are very selfish in relationships. There are women that are very selfish in relationships. You don't want to be with somebody who's selfish. And you don't want to be self. I mean, if you're selfish in the relationship, you're the problem. So, first caller, Truth Vibration Podcast. Man of the hour. What's up? What's up, Muscles? What's up, thanks? <laughs> thanks for the shout out, man. Uh, yeah. In my defense, <clears throat> I would date a woman that's been jabbed. Uh, and this is why. Because um, I know what mRNA is, and that is sperm. So the males are the carriers. So a woman can have it. I told Bamboo this. <clears throat> he knows what I'm talking about. But a woman can get the jab. She should be fine. You, you won't get any, uh, nan- shouldn't get any nanoparticles. That's going to be in the sperm. So the men, it needs to be more wary as a man of getting the jab rather than a woman. Um, this is just because I have a minor in biochem. Uh, this is just what I, I know about what mRNA is. I could be wrong, but that doesn't, that wouldn't stop me. But yeah, man, like, um, it, it, it was just funny how you were talking because I, I, I'm with Novelty right now. We're actually recording for the next episode. And uh, it was like you were talking about his whole, his past relationship that he just got out of. So it was pretty funny. He, he was over here laughing about it. So. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, dude, the, the Waco, Texas uh, thing, I, I know it's not the topic, but I did uh, send it to you on Twitter. I think it. I think it's going to be interesting for you to read because they definitely talk about the World Trade Center bombing a lot in that FBI file. Interesting. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Thirty-year anniversary of the Waco siege. Okay. Or not the That's siege, but the beginning of the really- standoff. It's the thirty-year anniversary of the beginning of the standoff. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the third year anniversary was just two days ago of the World Trade Center bombing. That's so, correct also, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, as for relationships, uh, I'm a little hesitant just because I think, obviously, everyone here, in here knows, I think Biden's going to be leaving office on April 19th. That's my prediction. And, um, I, you know, the MK Ultra, I, I, everyone... That's alive right now. I think most of the world, definitely in this country, has been MK Ultra. And there's certain triggers that trigger the MK Ultra um, because it, it's a trauma-based program. And when Kamala becomes the president, I think they're going to, I don't know how they're going to do it, maybe with frequencies, maybe with just media propaganda, um, whatever they're going to do. I, it's the, the women that have been MK Ultra to really hate men more and more, it's going to heighten up. But I, I think it's going to show that, you know, it kind of exposed it in a way. Like, well, okay, like this is getting out of hand. This feminist, progressive feminism is getting way too out of hand. It, 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 it's getting really bad. And maybe it might get some of the women who have been progressive feminists to kind of back away from it. Because, it, you know, it's probably going to get really bad. And I just warned some guys like this, be careful on who you're with because they can, if they're MK ultra feminists, you know, and, and you're living with this, this person, you know, they might kick you out or they might take the home or, or try to get you a domestic violence charge because I've seen tons of my friends, tons of, of people in my life. And it's almost happened to me, but luckily, like I know how, I usually know how to handle the police very well just once in a while. Uh, I haven't been as lucky, but <clears throat> the, the, they're going to get triggered, and then a lot of the men are going to get in trouble and have these domestic violence charges. And what happens with that? You can't own or possess a firearm. And it's one of the only misdemeanors that you can get if it ends up being a misdemeanor in most states where you can't possess a firearm if you have a domestic violence. So, it, you know, I, I do try to warn, like, really be more receptive with american women not not to say any of the american women truth seekers in the chat you know i've talked to quite a few of them they're they're usually a lot more like divine feminine energy um but a lot more women they don't even know what that is they don't search for it they they don't know um how to express their chakras or, or, or their kundalini energy and meditate and you know 
they're they're just on OnlyFans a lot and doing all kinds of crazy uh, stuff and watching Cardi B and things like that. And you know, maybe maybe one of those girls could be the one. And you gotta show her the way. That's always possible, but for you know, I always just try to warn guys like just be careful because once Kamala becomes president, it, they're gonna get ramp up the, the feminism more, and a lot of guys are gonna get in trouble. They've already gotten a lot of trouble with COVID. Um, obviously, that ever since COVID started, domestic violence rates have quadrupled, and obviously, the man's gonna get in more trouble in most states. Um, here in Florida, it, there it's about fifty fifty, but like Wisconsin, where I came from, they're going to side with the woman. So that that's just kind of how um, I'm I'm just seeing it, and that, that's like my third eye perspective on um, or my tunnel vision on where things are probably going to go. Um, and obviously, that that it might actually end up changing. Like I said. It's going to probably get so bad, a lot of the feminist women are probably going to back away from being feminists. So that could be a good thing. Indeed. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you for taking my call. Of course. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, take care. Right. Bye. Right, bye, man. Yeah, and, and, and with regards to Truth Vibration Podcast, something he does a really good job of is taking care of his body. And again, like if you lack confidence... You probably lack confidence because maybe you're not taking care of yourself, you know? Put yourself in, in, in the best position you can be in and your confidence will raise with it. And um, taking care of your body is a, a big part of that, you know? If you don't, if you say you don't have time for the gym, you can't afford a gym membership, it, it doesn't take a gym membership to be in, in shape. I mean, you can do a lot of exercises right on your floor and wherever you live that... Um, will do wonders for your physique. Push-ups and sit-ups, as simple as that. If, you, if you're regimented, if you're if you're waking up and doing 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, building it up to 100, I mean, you can knock that out in five minutes. You can do a lot more than that, but I mean, if you start your day that way, hop in the shower, you know, it, it'll, it'll make a, a, a major difference in, in your body. And you can do that in five minutes each day. Um... But yeah, gym memberships are pretty affordable too. So I'm sure there's a lot. If you if you don't think you can afford gym membership, which ranges between like probably ten and fifty dollars a month, um, I'm sure there's a way you can budget for that. And again, a, a gym's a great place to meet somebody else. You know. So. All right, we had a few people trying to call him while he was on. The line is open, you guys. It's a cell phone, so again, you just kind of kind of time it. You guys are listening to the show. The delay of the show is probably about ten seconds behind reality. So if it sounds like the call's wrapping up, that's the good time to dial the number. It's first come, first serve. Um, somebody in the chat said there is zero reason to date a woman in twenty twenty three, and I, I don't. To me, that doesn't make any sense. You know, if you want to call in and explain why there's zero reason to date a woman in 2023. Um, last time I checked, we're, we're human beings. We're social creatures. Uh, man was designed to be with woman. And, yeah, I mean, part of the human experience is, is sharing that experience and, and having a nice partner. And human sexuality is a, a normal part of living. People who have sex live longer than people who don't. So I have no idea what you mean by that. Um, if you're saying you don't need a woman because you just jerk off to porn each night, trust me, that's not the same. And that is not good for anything. 780, what's going on? Hey, Zach. Yeah, what's up? I know, Sam. Well, I tried calling in yesterday and touching on the topic yesterday, but... Uh... Guess I'll put my two cents in for today about relationships. Um, I was single for like a really long time, and I recently got in a relationship. And uh, like I was always a shy guy. Uh, I don't have a problem with with money or anything, but I worked uh, in the roofing industry. I'd be around men, and I I don't go out to to bars or anything, so I'd like zero interactions with women for like a really long time and uh some advice for for guys like obviously 
if you're looking for a relationship and you're not in one, you got to go outside and fucking talk to girls. And I did that a lot this year. And I struck out like 25 times in a row. Like, I'm not the best at talking to, to people or whatever, but just go out, fucking say hi, be uncomfortable, and uh, shoot your shot. And if guys aren't doing that, then you don't, don't be like, what do you expect to happen? And uh, yeah, I, I got in a relationship recently and uh, we, we actually met online. And uh, we're talking about traditional values and she's a traditional girl. And um, so far, we're getting along great. She she tried to like pull a little bullshit uh, a week or two ago, and uh, like broke up with me over the phone, and uh, a little bit. And uh, I just said, if that's your decision, you know, I want the best for you. I want you to be happy and successful. And then she called me back, and she's like, I really want to be with you, but I'm just scared. I'm like, I know where you're coming from. I did the same thing with girls when I was like 18 years old but we're like older now we're like in our mid-30s right so yeah she came back and uh really just you got to have that kind of attitude I think is like no matter what they do or what you do just be clear with each other and really want the best for them and if they're not wanting the best for you it's probably not a good thing but I really feel that from her and uh I don't know what you got to say about that I like what you said. I mean, you, you, you even knew that you're not that great at talking to women, but you went out and did it anyway because you realized there was no other way you were actually going to meet a woman, and that's exactly right. And people are just so afraid to fail, but you know what? I mean, because you went out there and did that, you met somebody. And, yeah, I mean, fear, it's, it's like it'll hold people back. We from... met online. Go ahead. We met online, but I... I've been trying like all in 22. Like I hit on like safety girls at, at our work site. I thought it was a safety girl. But it was like the, the like uh, supervisor of the whole area. And she got really nervous and blew me off. And I, like, I don't drink or do drugs or anything. I don't like hanging out with people, but I'd force myself to go outside and like uncomfortably, like walk up to girls, like walking their dogs and shit. I know that sounds kind of weird, but you know, you just, Hey, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And then fucking, do you want to exchange numbers? I, I struck out all 25 times, but, uh, at I least like you made the effort though, but it, okay. People, but you ended up meeting somebody online or fucking get girls walking their dogs or something like that. If you have to. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, meeting people online is fine too. Um, it's more difficult for guys to meet women online just cause like every woman's inbox is flooded with 50 guys you know, saying hello. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna date online, you should, like, if you're gonna reach out to a woman, like, you don't want to write too much, but write something that would stand out and not be cliche and, but yeah, anyway, yeah, I mean, good for you for, for, either. A lot of guys are fucking perverts and like getting sexual and shit. I mean, sometimes it work with some girls, but that's not my style. I mean, I did that shit when I was like 14, 15, 16, when I'm like 35 and like, if I was a woman and every guy's coming at me like that, you got to be the opposite. So I switched up my style when I was like 17 years old, guys. Don't be fucking perverts. Treat them like people. It, and, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is true. Guys do do that online. They just like, hey, want to hook up tonight? Here's my number. So, yeah, uh, women do get a lot of things like that. And, you know, the only women that are really going to respond to that are, are ones that you don't really want to be with. But anyway, man, I appreciate that story. Yeah. I'm going to let another person get in. Thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah, take luck. care. All right, nine one seven. What's up? Hey, so how you doing, Jack? Um, I just wanted to just give a, my intake just on um, in terms of setting yourself up for a successful relationship. Um, pretty much the whole solution to that is just humility and the lack of pride. Um, I noticed that the the most seriousness and and, and detrimental causes but an unsuccessful relationship is the pride. Um, in this day and age, nowadays, with feminism and, you know, just the selfishness and narcissism, um, it's, it's just pride, man. As long as we can come to an agreement, a consensus and an agreement of just being humbled and, you know, just uh, removing that pride. 
And then once you remove that that pride, then everything else becomes pretty much a walk in the park. I'm not trying to say it's, it's going to always be like, you know, rainbows and sunshine, but there will be adversity. But if you can identify the most cancerous component in terms of relationships, and trying to be having successful relationships is just the pride. The pride level, especially in this day and age, is just extremely at its height. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm an 80s baby, so I kind of grew up in the 90 era and things of that nature and seeing the whole transformation of, of relationships. And nowadays, it's like relationships doesn't even exist because, you know, the women, you know, they have pride. The men, they have pride. And on top of that, you know, the sex and um, the access of sex and, 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 and self-pleasure is just accessible everywhere. So it's like, you know, society has been transitioning into just, in terms of just selfishness and, and, and just being prideful to the point where we don't need each other. But we, we actually, in reality, do need each other, especially these arduous times that we're getting into. Oh, my gosh. You know what I'm saying? We, the only thing we're going to need and, 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 and is each other and love, you know? So um, I just wanted to just put that out there, um, you know, for the and, do you, do you want to elaborate on what you're saying? Like, all you need is, uh, like, yeah, th- those are good qualities to have in life. But, like, how are you? How are you saying that those things relate in, in terms of uh, the relationship? Like, give me an example of how you mean humility. Being humble, you know, in terms of, like, for example, what you, you know, you just made an example early about your sweet lady and the water situation. And you was humble enough to apologize and to accentuate on, on what you did wrong. You knew it's wrong. But sure. you removed that pride to apologize to her and to, you know, um, to humble yourself and, 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 to, and to make it work. You know what I'm saying? Humility. That was a, a prime example of what you just... Um, Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're, I, I just think of those words a little bit different than how you're using them. Like in a way, like the way I just boil it down is don't be an asshole. Like if you, if you want to be with somebody, be good to them. There's no, like you might be having a bad day. Don't take it out on your significant other because that's going to ruin your relationship. Right, right. So. And, and also I'll put this out there as men, as men, women do go through a time of the month where they can act real crazy. And what you got to learn to do as a man is just kind of be like, okay, I know, I know she's on her crazy time. I'm just going to try and uh, avoid get, yeah, don't, don't don't engage don't 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 like get, get in a shouting match or an argument it's just like okay i know why this is happening this week i'm just gonna exactly we're gonna navigate through this we're gonna weather the storm so absolutely only but it depends on the men though because some men you know they're not really educated and they don't really pay attention and they're not you know if you if you really love somebody you pay attention to them you, you understand their time of the month like for example my relationship i know when my woman is acting a little weird because she's on time of the month the hormonial starts to change the emotion you know things of that nature so also too it, it's our it's our job to also pay attention to what what's going on in the relationship you know in terms of your your, your woman your her body etc you know what i'm saying that's that's our responsibility to identify these, op- these problems you know what i'm saying to prevent future problems in the long run, you know, so, but, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to just, uh, put that out there. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Great advice. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I I knew that he was saying was right, but I was just like, give me like an example of how you mean it. Cause yeah, they say in life naturally, I mean, you should be humble. You should not be full of pride. Those are, those are not desirable qualities within uh, most people. And someone's watching, they're like, Zach, you're an arrogant asshole. <laughs> yeah, but I don't really carry myself that way in real life. Sometimes you got to be a little bit different online to get people's attention. So, um, yeah, it, I, somebody in the chat said it'd be nice if we had a female caller today. I thought we would have some female callers. Um, like the last live stream that I've done, the topic hasn't even really been relationships and people just been calling about relationship stuff. So I thought, let's do a... I was doing actual topic on relationships, but, you know, anyway, um, Mr. Bocci in the chat says, if you're doing the online dating thing and 
some woman just wants to hook up, she's probably after your bag. Hey, by the way, I mean, that do, that's something that happens to a lot of men. You know, that can happen from online dating. That can happen from the club. If you're just looking for that hookup, I mean, that that's a common scam in the world. The woman that, like, seeks you out. Hey, you're at the club. You got some nice necklace on, some nice watch, some fancy shoes. Uh, yeah, that can attract women. And it also might attract the woman who also in the club with her are some guys. And the real thing is that, yeah, you're going to take her home tonight. But you better pay attention to the car that's following you home because... You might get, you know, taped up in your house and have your house robbed. These things happen. That happened to my buddy about 10 years ago. Um, he lost a lot. He lost a lot. You know, he let the, he didn't get taped up, but what happened was some people followed him back. And um, the next day when he went to work, he came home and they busted into his house and stole everything in it. So he, he was showing off with the fancy watch, you know, the nice clothes. And then the next day, boom, everything nice in his house ripped off. And if you have cash in your house and it gets stolen, there's no recourse for that. Insurance doesn't cover stolen cash. So, and, and, and it was a life lesson for him, you know. You, you attract people for the wrong reasons. The wrong things might end up happening to you. And, and, and no relationship should be built on materialism. Uh, you know, that's, that's what a lot of people are trying to do. Um, it, it's different between being financially stable and, and being overly materialistic, you know. So, <laughs> well, I I don't know. Are there many clubs that you can get into with a gun? I I don't think you can get really in the club scene with a gun, but. Yeah, I mean that is a reason to that is a reason to have a concealed carry. You just never know what's going on in this world. You never know what day you might need that protection. It's another form of life insurance, that's for sure. So For the people who say laws are way too stacked against men, I read prophecies comment. I, I'm just gonna assume that what's behind that comment is, you know, like, I don't even want to try to have a relationship because you know, if I start having a family and my woman gets crooked with me, she'll take me to court, I'll lose everything, I'll lose my well-being, I'll lose the child. If that's the way you're thinking, I, I get that. I mean, that is kind of the way society is set up. That's why you got to make sure you really find the right person. And, and yeah, down the road, things can change. But I, I mean, there is an element of human nature. If you're really good to somebody and you're always good to them and you keep them satisfied, again, you meet your woman and, and you're on your financial game. You're taking care of your body. You know, you're good to her. If you maintain all those things throughout the relationship, just the way it was when you met, you know, you're taking care of your finances. You're taking care of your body. You're being good to her. None of that's changing. I don't think you're going to run into the day where, you know, she runs away and steals your, your kid and your money. I mean, they're, 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 I'm sure it can happen, but I think you keep the relationship good. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. 402? Hey, Zach, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Hey, nothing much, man. I just got off work. I was just listening to uh, the topic today. So I just thought I'd call in. Um, I guess it's just a little bit of advice, kind of mixed in with the story. Um, so I was dating this girl, met her family. You know, everything seemed to be fine or whatever. But the whole time she was hiding that she's an alcoholic. And for like a year, I didn't know that she was an alcoholic. And it was this craziest so thing ever. How, here's my first question, though. How do you hide for a year that you're an alcoholic? Were you guys not spending that much time together? Uh, see, yeah, that's the thing is uh, we weren't spending that much time together. We lived in different cities, uh, only like 45 minutes away, so it wasn't too far. But, um, you know, and her parent and her fucking mom knew, but her mom didn't tell me. And so long, I know I only got a couple minutes or whatever, but... Uh, so long, long story, you know, we dated for like three years, um, and I accepted it. You know, she stopped drinking or whatever. I, I took her to rehab. She got a little help with that, whatever, because I cared about her. And just as another human being to another human being, I wanted to see her get better, you know? Um, but anyways, I ended up blowing up on her mom and stuff, and at the end, like, you knew your daughter was no good, blah, blah, blah. But um, so that's one story. Another, another one, guys, is, is pick up on energy, pick up on vibes. I, I would I had this girl that I would see for a uh, short period of time, and uh, like the first couple nights it was good, everything was fine. This is a different girl we're speaking about, 
But um, after like a month or two, um, when she when we'd kiss, I'd get like a weird energy, like a weird vibe, and like my soul, my heart didn't like it. Like it was just weird. I don't know how to explain it, but you you know a good vibe, and then you know a bad vibe. And every time we'd kiss, I'd get like this bad vibe or whatever. And one night we were sitting, you know, we we're smoking a little weed or whatever, just you know, doing our thing. Um, I swear to God, like a demon was possessing this woman or something because like the the lights were off and and we just had one little lamp on and like I looked at her and I'm like she looks weird in the dark right now like I know I'm a little stoned but I'm not fucking retarded you know and it was just it was just the weirdest thing ever and that girl that I would kiss I swear she was like a succubus or a demon inside of her or something because like I said when we kiss after like the first month or so it was it was just bad vibes from there. Um, so I why did you stay in the relationship? Long story short. What's that? Why would you stay in the relationship? Oh, we we I only dated her for uh, maybe three months total. Well, not even dated, but was involved with her for like three months total. Okay. Yeah, there wasn't much of a relationship there, but um. Yeah, I just I'm driving home from work right now, so I just got off work and stuff. But I just I just heard the the topic and I just wanted to call in, uh, give me something to do on the drive home here. But uh, yeah, guys, just pick up on red flags, pick up on vibes and energies. Like, you know, Zach always talks about a woman's intuition, but men men got intuition and men got superpowers too. It's just up to you to to think with your your other head. You know, don't think with the the, the one down south. So indeed, but yeah. Yeah, that's about all I got. I just want to call in. God bless everybody out there listening. All right. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, man. Take care. Bye. Yeah, long-distance relationships, like, I, I just don't think those are a good idea in general. Like, date somebody who's in your proximity. A long-distance relationship, I mean, you're just opening up the door for a gazillion different problems. So... Well, so far it's been all guys. No women today. No female callers so far today. Let's see. 734. Uh, hello? Hello. Oh, hey, Zach. Can you hear me good? It's kind of muffled, but I hear you. Uh, uh, let me try to switch for uh, Is it any better? It's not great. It's not great. I can check. Still bad. I could hear that you said still bad. It's still not great, but go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, I was gonna host it uh, back up so your, your video. I was wondering if you want me to like try to grab uh, maybe reduce like the bit rate, how much uh, size it takes up. It might look less detailed, but all the information will be there. Or if you want me to like uh, archive specific things like sports and like uh, very very famous people that you, you can know, do whatever you want. I mean, I, I download almost all of my videos. I have almost everything backed up. So, so what do you got them stored on them? Uh, external hard drive. But yeah. All right. Well, I, I appreciate it, though, man. Thank you. Uh, I guess you're good. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. No caller ID. No caller ID. Oh, they hung up. No caller ID hung up. Okay. My dad just let me know he's got his surgery appointment scheduled. I wasn't picking up his call. I knew he was calling about something else. No caller ID again. Zachary. Oh, it's a troll. Hello. It's a troll. Oh, you sexy. You sexy, man. So are you happy with your oh, life a as a troll? 6969. Are you happy with your life? Oh, I just love watching you, you sexy man. Okay. 
one of Travis's buddies. Okay. Yeah, no ladies today. We had some good lady callers yesterday and the day before, but not today. So I think they need Yeah Right the Matrix to provoke them. Anytime Yeah Right the Matrix calls in, the ladies start getting all provoked. They're like, I got to call in and say something now. So. But yeah, anyway, if we don't have a lot of calls about it today, again, I guess it's just an off-topic thing, right? People like to be off-topic. If I do the video about it, people don't want to call in about it. 928. Hey, what's up, Zach? Yeah, what's going on? Can you hear me all right? I hear you. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, man, um, I've been dating this, uh, this woman for about a year now. <clears throat> and um, I think last... And was it on the superb owl day? Um, I took a little bit of mushrooms. <clears throat> um, I think right when Rihanna was performing on the halftime, <clears throat> which was <laughs> uh, pretty funny to watch. Um, but yeah, so after the Super Bowl ended, it started kicking in. And, you know, I just kind of let out. <clears throat> how I felt at the time um, towards her, and it was kind of shocking towards her. She wasn't ready for that. But I kind of had it planned. <clears throat> um, like, I am able to be myself around her, you know? Like, I can say things, I can share my heart with her, and that's what I love about a relationship. <clears throat> but what's bothering me is she doesn't share the same interests. Like, uh, I, I enjoy art, music, movies, and, you know, if I, we watch a movie together, that's it. You know, it's just the movie. The movie's over, and we make dinner or whatever. Whereas, you know, I would like to be able to be with someone that, <clears throat> I don't know, shares their thought on the movie or the piece of music that we listen to. Um, so why not, so why not, her, why know, not get out of the relationship that's 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 not working and, and go find that person? Go I ahead, mean, sorry. why not? I mean, obviously if you're not on the same page, why not just, you know, end the relationship and, and find, you know, the right person. Well, the thing is, is that I'm myself around her. You know, it's kind of hard to find people that you can be yourself around, you know. Um, and uh, we live in a small community. So if I end it with her, <clears throat> um, I'm going to, we work together. We're not in like the same departments, but we work. We'll see each other eventually, periodically. So, but yeah, I got to deal with that. You know, it's, it's a tough situation. Um yeah, well, so, okay, so you're saying, uh, well, we're in a small community, there's not a lot of options, it's hard to find anybody. So she satisfies part of what you need, you can be yourself, which is obviously important, but it doesn't sound like you're happy in the relationship, so, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's going to work out in the long term unless somebody changes. I mean, do you talk to her about how you wish things were different? Does she say back to you, like, uh, well, I wish yeah. you were like this, or you guys talk about these things? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we haven't really set, had a talk since I kind of unloaded on her on uh, the 12th. So it's kind of like, <clears throat> at this point, I have to ask her what she wants out of the relationship, I think, and um, go from there because I kind of told her what I wanted and um, we just haven't had a chance to really sit down and have a talk again. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think in the long run, I do want to be with someone who I can share similar interests with and, um, as well as, you know, be myself with, but, uh, yeah. Cause what I would say is it's okay to be single. I think it's better to be single than be in a relationship that you're not happy in. And yeah, I mean, if, if you guys can't get on the same page and you realize that you're always going to be feeling unfulfilled, 
then again, I mean, you got to be you got to be single to meet the right person. So I, I personally, if if you can't get on the same page, I would just I would just you know say it, it, you don't have to break up in a nasty way. You just be like, it's obvious that that we should be with different people. So we got to go our own separate ways. Right. <clears throat> Well, I mean, we're, we're we're trying, man. I mean, she uh, she's gonna go to a concert of a band that I want to check out in Phoenix, the Mars Volta. So she's willing to, you know, expand her horizons. So she's not American. She's from uh, Myanmar. Oh, she's from Burma. She's like sweet lady. She's sweet Burma. lady's from Burma. <laughs> yeah. So she has an accent, you know. She has a sass, and uh, that appeals to me. You know, it's kind of hard to come by with sure. that type of climate. Sure. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what's she into? Like, people in Burma love to sing, and rock music's really popular in Br Burma. She might like the Mars Volta, so. <laughs> yeah, she's never been to a concert before, so hopefully okay. she likes them. Um, she, she likes to cook. She's a really good cook, actually, so. Yeah, I you know, believe it's, that. It's That's part of their culture. So, well, how long have you guys been together for? Uh, just over a year now. All right, not that long. I mean, there is still room to to grow the relationship, but yeah, I mean, if if it just keeps being on different pages, I mean, just cut the tie, and it might be a small town, but still, there's a better option out there. And you know what else? I mean, I don't know if you want to continue to live in the town. There's other places to move to as well. So. Yeah, where I work, um, our employers pay for our housing. So, <laughs> um, I, I've been in a bubble pretty much, just kind of watching the world be chaotic. Well, we just kind of have our rent taken out of our paycheck, and it's kind of kind of nice actually. But uh, I'm just kind of baffled. Um, not sure where to start <laughs> if I ever leave this place, or when I do. I mean. I don't think I want to be here forever, but. Sure. Well, I, I, if you guys can grow together and the relationship can improve, then I, I guess you can still make it work. But yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of signs that maybe you guys aren't the right match. So you you, got, you don't want it to uh, impact your happiness. But um, all right, we got our first lady call. I'm going to let yeah. a lady on, but but good luck, man. You'll end up making the right, right call. Man. Great. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, Have a good one. yeah take right. care. I didn't switch over quick enough. It was Barbara from yesterday. Barbara, the phone hasn't been too busy. You can call back. Um, so, but what he was doing though is he's like saying, well, this is our life situation and, you know, being with her works out because, you know, our work's there and then we get the, so, I mean, that's like compromising your life. It's like, if you're not happy, you know, you're, you're going to look back someday and be like, man, I wasted part of my life. I should have asked him how old he was. But, yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll go to the concert and they'll, they'll have a whole new thing in common. You just never know. So, sounds like he wants to make it work. What's up, Barbara? Hey. Hello. Hey, I we're about, we're about 100% in the last couple of days. Um, I didn't get to catch the first part of this, but... I did want to, um, to chime in again, and I, I think that what you're bringing forth here in the last couple of days is really important because it's it's really back down to the essence of what you know what we're all feeling out here. Um, as far as the, the successful relationship, I would I'm going to just say what my opinion is of this. I would acknowledge um, have to acknowledge that. First of all, we have to we have to get real here and acknowledge that. Are we there? You're here. Yeah, you're on, Barbara. Okay. Okay. So, um, first of all, we have to go back to the basic fact. We have to acknowledge that we are born a male or a female, and shock. That's it. You are born what you are born. I mean, first of all, in a relationship in my opinion, in order to have a successful relationship, people can't be going around and deciding that there are men one day and women the next and saying, I'm a woman, man, man. You know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. So in my opinion, 
the people that are going to make a successful relationship have to have a little bit of common sense and know that they were born into what they were born into, in my opinion. And it's, to me, that's just basic ABC. I agree. Number two, as far as the gentleman that was just on, he, he said that he's very comfortable with the person he's with, but she doesn't share all of his interests or a significant amount of his interests, but he can tell her anything he feels comfortable with her. Uh, the conundrum of that is, of course, you don't want a clone, in my opinion. You don't expect perfection. It doesn't happen. You have to allow each other to be different. And if I may point back to a great read, it was Khalil Gabron. Read Khalil Gabron, The Prophet, in the section on love and marriage. It's very, very um, explicit and beautiful the way it's explained that the trees are together, but yet they, the breeze goes through them separately. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I'm a fan from a long time ago. You can't expect, if you have a clone, what is there to expand with? There's nothing. Um, I've been married for 39 years. It's my third marriage, and he doesn't like classical music, and I was brought up in it. <laughs> and other things. He likes sweet and sour. I like garlic and lemon. But we still have a, a great relationship because we respect the differences and we accept them and we are friends. That's one of the main things I learned three is the third is the charm. But when you're in a relationship and you just go in it when you're younger and you're hot and heavy, that burns out and you find that there's nothing left but ashes. In my, in my experience anyway and a lot of other people that I've known, if you're friends first, you can bond together and accept each other and, um, and, and, and have interests, even if there's not every single interest. If you have some and you're friends and can talk to each other, like we're talking now, you have a relationship, and I think it, it, it lasts a lot longer. And like I said, I'm 39 years into this one. So, And, and the other final, final thing is honesty. If you can't be honest, even if you, if you make mistakes, Instead of trying to hide them or cover them up, if you can talk to each other and the friend thing comes in there and you can be honest with each other um, and forgive each other if there is a forgiveness involved and not hold people's emotions hostage like, well, if you don't do this, I'm not going to have sex with you tonight. That kind of thing, just forget it. That's not going to have a successful relationship. That's bondage. So I just thought I'd throw my female perspective in there for you tonight <laughs> I, I think those are all great tr tips and um yeah the, the friendship thing absolutely um you know the the, the very t first time i met sweet lady uh again i just I, that's how i felt i felt like she was a friend she was just funny and just easy to talk to and asked interesting questions and surprised me and i was like this is, this is a person i can hang out with every day so Exactly. Good point. Um, and I must, and I have to say about that also, um, I was lucky. I'm, I'm not the first, but not the second, but the third. Um, but we were friends first. My daughter ended up, she was at University of South Florida in music education, and she met her now husband there. But he, they had a room off campus. And he happened to be a roommate. She had two roommates, and he was one. She was one, and they were just, they didn't, you know, they had no sexual interest. They, they were friends, and what happened was he was roommate with her for, like, two years, and then all of a sudden it just developed into something else, and they have a great marriage. They're up in Ohio, and they have uh, three daughters, all music-educated, and but they went, you know, they, they were friends. And, and that that was the basis for, you know, a great relationship. I just have to stress so many people are so hot up on sex and on instant gratification, they don't see the forest through the trees. And that's why I really recommend, you know, if you if you're in a kind of a state where you wanna look you know, look a little meditative meditative part, look at Kalil Gabron 
The Prophet. Read The Prophet. It's a great book. It's out of print, but I think you can still get it on Amazon. Um, I don't know if you've read it, Zach, but it is great, really. I have not read it. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you need to do that. I'll just go ahead and see if they have it on Amazon. Um, but anyway, I'm going to keep you. I, I think it's great that you're bringing these issues forward, like the suicide and, and the, the, the successful relationships, because right now so many relationships between human beings are being fractured. We need to pull together. Indeed. Indeed we do. So Appreciate it as always, Barbara. Great call again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, no caller ID. Hey. Hello. Uh, lastly, I don't know about that. She's been married 39 years. I don't know if anybody wants to hear about her sex life. And the one before that, so uh, just, sounds like my man's you. You're just calling in a troll? You don't respect life experience? Huh? That, that wasn't the point of her call, right? She wasn't, like, specific about her sex life. She was just talking about, like, what finally made a lasting relationship for her. I don't know. Nobody needs that mental picture of a 39 years of marriage. She's having nobody needs that. You know what Okay. Do you want to make an actual point about successful relationships? Yeah, just, you know, being, being open, being, uh, being honest with them, and just... Tell them what you need, man. I can't give it to you. Whatever. Be honest. She said that too. I agree. Honesty is huge. Thank you. All right. What's up, two all one? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, man. Hey. Yeah. So first of all, I was thinking. Um, first, you you should probably take time to learn your your, your own self. You know before. And Can you boost your volume somehow? Can you make your volume louder? Huh? Make make it turn, 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 turn it up or down. Volume up. Up. Um, so up as it can be. Um, let me turn off the stream for a second. All right, all right, is this better? That's better. Okay. Yeah, I was saying. Um, first you should probably take take time to learn learn your your own self. You know. Um, I feel like at times. Folks, they they enter into the date, dating world with uh, um, with like these preset uh, this, this rubric rule, rule, rule that's based on media, you know, from TV and movies and things and things like that, and um, those aren't really a realistic uh, um, examples of how relationships work, you know. Um, so I think, you know, folks should first try and take time, time to learn themselves and um, uh, investigate how, how re 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 relationships really work from um, a wide array of real life examples, um, I, I, even from diff 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 different cult cult cultures as need be, you know, but um, uh, just take time to learn who you you actually are and what you actually want at that point in your life. You know, can you handle a relationship? Do you just want to mess around? Do you just want to explore? Do you just need a friend? Do you need that marriage? But um, investigate these uh, wants and potentialities first, you know. Um, and so um, well, I think a very important trait, um, the accountability, um, and, uh, you know, not having uh, the expectations of your partner uh, that you yourself don't live, live, live up to. Um, and like, because uh, at, at, at times, you know, we might date out of, of, of our league, whether it's completely or in some area of life, you know. Um, and in situations like that, um, I think more gratefulness should be, be shown and using that your, your partner's um, um, advancement in that uh, in, in that area of life um, uh, as motivation for for yourself to level up you know um, but um, again again um, if you yourself are not live, living up to, to these things that you want a partner um, I don't think that's really fair and I don't think it's, it's that's setting yourself up for um, 
for a, um, a, a successful re- re- relationship. And um, uh, last two things, um, I think was more important than um, than the common interest is common um, ethics and principles and um, um, and morals and stuff. So you guys can meet in the middle on interest and stuff. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. If she's not into manga and video games and shit and shit and shit like that, um, it would help, of course, but doesn't matter. And in fact, it could be more more, more interesting because if y'all like like each other and um, you know, and match based on um, your 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 morals, which is you know, it can 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 uh, sprout some deeper roots in the relationship. Um, the 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 other stuff is just dressing, you know. It's just that you cherries on top, you know. And um, and for the straight men, um, I know this is a broad generalization, but I, I I would say don't look for like a bro with tits, but like look for a woman. You know what I mean, women are different, and their differences can be difficult difficult at times, but um, their differences, they, they complement meant us. It doesn't always have to be a point, you know, um, of division and con and conflict and stuff. Um, at times it will be because we can't fully relate um, and vice versa them with us because we have our own issues and stuff. But, um, it was just, 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 uh, try and develop a more realistic, uh, view, uh, of what a woman actually is not some media de- de- depiction, but what a woman really is um, or can be and um, and relate to them based on that, uh, you know, to show, show some respect uh, to what women go, go through and stuff. <clears throat> you know, there are genuine issues, not, not a manufactured ones. And um, I, I think those things help. Your relationships are going to be hard. They're going to be hard work, but, um, but it's worth it though. And um, that's it. I appreciate the topic, Zach. Pre- appreciate the call. Great call. And you're right. You got to know yourself first. Yeah. If you, if you don't even know who you are, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny because people are just so used to being conformist and you grow up in a system that's kind of telling you to be something that maybe you aren't. It's trying to turn you into something that's never felt right. So, yeah, that is true. I mean, you got to figure out who you are. Some people really don't know who they are. So They they have no no clue, you know, and they're walking around and blind. That's part of the reason we get into a lot of the conflicts we, we get into because we're, you know, the square peg trying to fit into the circle or whatever what, what, whatever shape peg trying trying to fit into the wrong um, slot, you know what I mean? And um, and um, it's difficult because, you know, the media is a powerful tool and um, it's, hit, it's, it's, it's been working on this since birth. So um, it's going to be a difficult thing, but uh, for for those of us that's lucky enough to either have <clears throat> mentors or good examples or just uh, or the intuition, um, you know, uh, and, and even if you don't, just seek, um, do things that's outside the norm, read a book you normally wouldn't, just do something. But like um, when when you change it up, like uh, when you put it out there. Uh, the, the, the messaging and the answers might come back in bits and pieces and in the strangest ways, but like we have to try and find ourselves. Um, uh, I don't recommend <laughs> drugs, but some people, you know, you might you might find find yourself a little bit through it. It's like that looks or what after, but uh, the road to self discovery is really worth it. Um, and um, I think that can. Uh, clean up a lot of the issues, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, man. And, um, it's just real quick, Zach, man, I appreciate, I really appreciate your work, man. Um, you were in New York in the area that I, that I, that I was in and um, I missed y'all and, um, I was so upset, but, um, you know, the, the best of luck to you. And we'll be back. Sweet lady. You, you will? Okay, yeah, they'll cool. be it next time. <laughs> so. All right, cool, cool, man, cool. Cause I need my book signed, man, and I need a flick with, with the man, you know? Um, 
But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The best of luck to you and everybody in the movement. Um, sweet being late, late and everything. And um, yeah, yeah, man. Just keep at it, man. I really appreciate it, man. One full word, bro. Thank you. I appreciate the support, and I look forward to next time. And thank you for the call as well. Of course, man. No problem, man. Have right. a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, I got to wrap it up, True Seeker, because um, Sweet Lady asked me to make a specific dinner, and it's going to take some time. So I got to get it ready. And um, yeah, thank you, Barbara, for calling in and everybody else, too. But it was nice to at least get one lady on here. And um, next time, we'll have to uh, pay you outright to call in early to uh, agitate the women so we can hear some more ladies' voices. It's got the magic touch. So that's it for now and um all you single people who don't want to be single again first take care of yourself you know build up the confidence work on the eye contact you know work on the financials work on the physique when you feel like you're on a better path like you're ready to attract that significant other um you'll, you'll know when the time is and yeah, again, I, I, if, you, if you're in a relationship and you just realize it's not right, I mean, don't waste your time. Just say, hey, you don't have to be mean about breaking up. And just say, you know what, I enjoyed the time we had together, but I just, you know, this this is not right for me. And um, I think we, it's best we just leave it there. So yeah, the one caller, uh, again, the one caller. Um, uh, again, if you guys can't get on a, if like the concert thing doesn't work out, it's just like you got to move on got to move on trust me you look back and you, you'll regret wasting your time i think young guy wants to call in here real quick but i really do got to make dinner and um all right you got one minute buddy okay one minute okay um so um one some, something else in our in our society is that uh, a lot of people don't want to have like a traditional relationship and they don't understand how how you can't have a relationship like that like um you know Usually the guy wants to work and then the woman doesn't want to stay home. She like wants a, a slave job. I wouldn't say that, that you're in that cause you stay home. Like you're like a house husband. Um, but I think that that re kind of relationship makes sense too, because one person's working and one person is taking care of the house. Um, but, but like some, like people will have kids and the guy's working and then the woman doesn't want to stay home and she wants to get, have the kids raised by the, by the state and by, you know, low wage employees. And, you know, it's like, you, you, like when you just can't have a relationship like that, you know, that's, that's bound to fail because, you know, one person wants a slave job. Like they just don't have their priorities in order. Um, my girlfriend was, is pretty happy with being like a housewife. She wants to stay home. Um, she doesn't, she like, she has nothing. She has no reason to like want to go out and work. Um, Hold on. Here, I'm going to tell you something. you got a fan in Arizona. You don't even know this. His name's King Henry. He goes, I love when that young kid calls in. He refers to himself as an engineer, and he still lives at home with his parents. Uh, hey, I love everything about you, buddy. You're on a great path. But, like, man, you got to go out and actually live it before you give advice. You can't call in as an 18-year-old who still lives at home, be giving out relationship advice. So, anyway, i got to make dinner. Everybody else, you guys have a good night, including you. Take care, guy. But yeah, I, I mean, again, also like know how old you are, know what your life experience is. Don't be giving out experience that you don't even have. So real advice back to the 18 year old. Um, and we'll leave it there for now. I do got to make dinner. So till next time, everybody.